We're moving pretty darn fast towards the winter season here, and I'm taking a look today at some of the rainwater collection systems in our landscape. I'm actually up at our six acre spot in Trumansburg. Here behind me is a shed wing I talked about in another video with a gutter system that collects rainwater into four IBC tanks. I want to talk about how I drained that system out, what, um, what I think of, what the timing looks like in order to make the decision to do that, and what it looks like when you don't do it in time. So stick around, I'll show you all those bits. I want to show a number of examples in this video of ways that we manage uh, these sorts of rainwater collection systems in the winter months. So we get very much cold. We do not want to have water stored in these cisterns. They can theoretically, technically, uh, take being filled with water and freezing solid and not being necessarily killed. I've seen that happen. I have made that situation happen, unfortunately. Uh, it swells the metal. Sometimes they break at the bottom, sometimes not. It's very risky in a cold climate. You really do want them drained. But the good news is that you can see here a simple gutter system with a little shunt that goes into through some filters and into this first tank. What I do not have to do with these systems is fundamentally change the downspout to go somewhere else. I can leave all of the incoming where it is, and in this case I just open all of the valves, they equalize to this first tank, and a theme with all of them is I add a little shunt so this is where the water can leave. So as it's coming in, if it's snowing, it's not gonna come in, but if it's raining, it will. And I have the pipe, the hose, come down slope to an overflow drainage ditch. So all the water that comes in for the winter is freely allowed to leave that first cistern and go into a ditch and away. This is the same ditch that takes care of water moving through the ground in the landscape. This is a way more ragamuffin setup. I might upgrade at some point, but works fine enough. There's four 55 gallon tanks here. Very, very much uh, loose in the way it was set up. But this is the one that receives, and you can see a half cut off piece of PVC that drops the water in. We used to have a filter, but there is none. But these are empty now, and same basic picture. We have the valve fully open, and connected to a hose that freely goes down slope and sends water very much away from the firewood shed. It goes down into that nursery space. And so all the water that comes in freely is allowed to be shunted to somewhere where we wouldn't mind seeing more water in the landscape later. And so looking at that setup over there, freely receiving and flowing down slope and away this setup here receiving and coming down and away that is the theme to all of this we leave the rainwater collections exactly where they are but that which holds the water in the system in the receiving container if there's multiple or in the one if there's one it lets the water in and it lets it out and we add a leg to it to send further away here is a single ibc tote that collects rainwater off of the roof of my mom's home with a really simple filter and there's that red hose that's hooked up that normally serves these gardens in the summer months. Really simple uh, one tank to deal with the needs of these. It works just fine. Here is an example of what it looks like. You can see there's still water in there. I did not make the time to take the red hose and send it further away and open up the tank so it could freely flow. And that's what it looks like when you do that. This has cracked, that you can see it right there. We got down to around 26 degrees or so. There you go. I could technically repair that, but for the most part, these tees, once they go through that sort of cracking, you're hard pressed to have them heal in an easy way. So you avoid this by doing what I did with the other tanks before you get to a deep freeze. The smaller components are the most vulnerable of freezing really hard. Um, th luckily this cracked, but not this. This is a six to seven dollar piece or I can find them used. This, if it breaks on the tank, sometimes it means the end of the tank or you have to get a much more expensive bulkhead. So that's what it looks like when you don't empty them in time. So what I'll do is turn this valve, which will allow water to flow through the red hose and we'll put the red hose out in a meaningful way. So now we've got the bulkhead open from the tank. So rainwater, if it does come in, if we have a thaw, an inch of rain above freezing and then it freezes again, it can freely flow through this red hose. It's a really junky 
scrap hose we found on the side of the road, but it works fine enough. You can see it's got some squeezies. I should squeeze that with pliers and smooth it out so it flows better, but it comes much further away from the house, which is the important part, and can freely drain out over here. Not a whole lot more that needs to be shared there. The basic gist of the way we operate our rainwater collection systems as we transition from fall to winter is once we no longer actively need the water for gardening and generally around the time that first frosts come, we're wrapping up uh, the growing season anyway. So we make sure all the valves are open. We add segments of hose that take the tank water and send it much further away from the structure and we just let it flow for the winter. We reassess in the spring, close things back down, and then get our hoses back online for use again. Uh, that's the way we've been doing it for at least a decade, probably a bit more. I am sure there are way more elegant solutions out there. Let us know in the comments if you've got some ideas that feel more thoughtful, more meaningful, uh, more respectful of infrastructure. But for those of you that want a, not a complex way to deal with this stuff before it freezes solid, open up the valve, shunt it as far away from the structure as possible, you'll be good enough. Thanks.